Today we're going to be taking a peek through Project Loon's balloon technical documents. This is Google's balloon project that existed from 2011 to 2021, uh, and I guess a decade there. And they have released a treasure trove of their technical learnings out onto the internet for people to benefit from for balloon science to be advanced publicly rather than just kept private. They achieved a lot of great things. And tonight we're going to take a first peek through that library of documents, just sort of a skim level, and see what's interesting. And in future streams, we'll take a deep dive. I actually spent uh, six years working on Project Loon, so this is pretty relevant to my knowledge base. Uh, and while well, I'm not sure I can add much to this report, um, it'll be interesting. I, I welcome any questions and comments and chats. Um, so we'll wait till some people start rolling in. in the meantime, I will check our audio and so forth. We'll wait a couple of minutes till people people start coming in. Just waiting a couple of minutes for more people to come in before we dive in to this beautiful set of documents that Project Loon has published. Feel free to say hi in the chat on whatever platform you're watching on. Howdy Looney. Hey, Sam. <laughs> Howdy Looney to you. Good to hear from you. We're waiting a few minutes. It does. All right. So let me go dig up that document here. Let me know if you actually are able to hear the text to speech from the chats. I'd like to share that. Make sure our aspect ratio is pretty here when I share the screen. Look at that beautiful balloon in Moffat Hangar in Sunnyvale. Beautiful, well, in Sunnyvale, anyway, <laughs> on the southern shore of the San Francisco Bay. There we go. Looks like that fills the frame nicely. Give you guys an even better picture, though. See if I can. There we go. Even better. Have you had a chance to uh, to skim through it yet, Sam? No, I have not. Sweet. Let's take a look at this together. I only had five minutes to skim through today. I was actually on a video call with Kevin. Interested to see what is in there. Me too. Kevin and I took a quick skim through it today in the middle of a call, but uh, just looked at headings basically. It looked like there's actually some useful detail in there from, you know, 10 seconds of scanning. Hello everybody. Feel free to say hi in chat. So this balloon we're looking at here, um, I believe this was the PE-01. Is this the inverted ballonet, Sam? That was after my time. Definitely looks weird <laughs> compared to the ballonets I used to poke around with. And also, 
no worries if you don't actually want to uh, to say anything well, it's like to, it. to the project. That's okay too. So pretty, so damn pretty. That pitch black Moffat hanger. Tonight's stream is brought to you by Soylent, the drink of nerds everywhere. All right, got a couple people here. Let's take a look. Lessons from building Loon's stratospheric communications service. Credits. <laughs> Most of these I don't know. Others, oh, Kevin and Sam. Herbert. <clears throat> Distributed under Creative Commons CC BY. Okay, I haven't said this in a long time, but Loon, I love you. That's the way to do it. What that means, everybody, is that it is, you're able to use this in a special copyright manner where all you have to do if you want to reuse any data from this is that you have to say that it came from Loom. You can use it for private uses, you can use it for commercial uses. Let's move on here. Do we have a table of contacts? Oh, we do. So, intro, tech accomplishments, stratosphere. I'm not going to read through all these, you can skim along with me here. Give a holler if something jumps out to you to peek at. Otherwise, we'll kind of jump through at whatever pops out is interesting to me. Is that music too loud? That looks too loud. Music's too loud. Okay, so let's uh, switch over to our actual title here. And let's keep going down the table of contents. Flight vehicle, the balloon, architecture, ter termination is always exciting. Um, descent systems, that will be parachutes, comms, not my bailiwick. Loon software, very important. But uh, we probably won't dive into that today. Um, engineering, production. Oh, that could be interesting. Design for reliability. Might be a little dry for most people. So the more interesting of these topics, we'll actually dive into in future, future streams in detail. We'll pick some. Airborne operations at scale. That's, that'll be very useful for future fleet projects. I like the title, Interface with the Real World. Aviation safety, always important. Transitioning to airships. Prep for hydrogen? <laughs> hey, I worked on that. Uh, we might start there just to see uh, if my stuff made it in there. I'm surprised they finally admitted publicly they were going to do that. Well, I guess there's no reason not to now. Let's take a peek there at hydrogen. Airship. I'm not going to read all of this, but feel free to skim along here. Okay, this music is too much. I'm going to kill the music. There we go. Yeah, yeah, helium is expensive. Moon studied. That's it? Oh no, okay, yeah, here we go. Facility designs, two modes of flame propagation, 
propagation exists. Oh, this is good. This is real details. Yeah, we, yeah, we had, uh, yeah, they conducted small and live scale testing of these hazards, meaning uh, they set balloons on fire at Southwest Research Institute. I saw some of the videos that was pretty cool. Oh, look at that. This is the, uh, it's a great chart. Basically how big your balloon is and how much air got mixed into the helium. Uh, how far away uh, are you going to have your eardrums blown out, etc. Deflagration. Yeah. Hydrogen flame detectors. Those were very expensive. Remote turn on, turn off, purging, inventing equipment. That that was what I did. Remote turn on, turn off, purging, inventing equipment for putting all lines into a safe condition. That was the uh, the HBF, the hydrogen bird feeder. I spent a couple years on that. Apex altitude control system. Huh. Descent and abatement. I also worked on the descent and abatement. Um, mostly just the. Uh, developing a little needle sampler that uh, the crews would uh, during the testing phase we would fly helium balloons uh, like a hundred of them i think um, and cut them down um, and then go immediately have a crew land with a helicopter and jump out with this big needle i made and a little pump in a bag and they'd stab the needle into whatever lumps and bubbles might be left uh, as the plastic was draped on the ground and it would pump into this this hydrogen proof bag and or helium proof bag bring it back to the lab and i would measure the the concentration of helium left in it and the goal was to make sure every balloon landed with no helium left and that meant it would be safe for hydrogen someday it was testing the methods of termination of releasing the helium okay let's uh, skip back to the contents page and check out another section. There's 400 pages here. Sorry right for epileptic people here. Okay. Technical accomplishment summary. Let's take a look at that. Coordinating a fleet. And balloons for design and manufactured. Yeah, temperature drops as low as negative 90 C. Ultraviolet radiation does eventually uh, make the plastic degrade and fall apart. We did break flight duration records, um, at least for uh, pumpkin-shaped balloons, anyway. The longest balloon flight in history uh, was in 1967. Uh, I mean 1967 through 1969. Uh, that was 740 some days. Yeah, flight supervision. Flight restrictions, yep. Loon flights, oh, this is cool. Two million hours and 70 million kilometers. Uh, you can see where we launched from Puerto Rico and Winnemucca, and we did a lot of testing in Peru and the west side of South America and uh, over Kenya, and apparently in the middle of the Indian Ocean, there was something we hung around at. And a lot of wandering. A lot of wandering. <laughs> yeah, stratosphere. Cool, science. We'll come back to that another time. Oh, Loon's range, yeah. So, 18 to 22 kilometers, basically. Right at the tropopause. That's where the winds start to get swirly and where you can actually find different layers going different ways. Yeah, okay. How to fly from the stratosphere. Yeah, this is wind direction chart from 1981 to 91. Mm, we'll come back to that another time. Oh, this is cool. They're given all the weather terms of how the winds shift throughout the planet uh, and throughout the seasons. The 
first demonstration that vehicles weren't completely free of turbulence at 65,000 feet, even in clear weathers. Oh, I remember this. Yeah. There were anomalies as the balloons were transiting over the Andes. Um, as in, they got their asses kicked. Gravity waves generated from the jet stream flowing over the Andes. And they reached up into the stratosphere, causing turbulence at Loon's altitude. Roll. <laughs> yeah, uh, mountain wave. Yeah, basically the the wind, the jet stream off the Pacific hits this wall of mountains and then has to go up and over. And it's got uh, like some inertia. And so it goes up and over. And then there's swirl here. So don't be there. But then it's got like a rebound effect because the atmosphere is compressive. So uh, when it... When it goes up and over, it comes up and then back down, and it compresses the air like a spring here. And, and then as it continues on along, it bounces back up and then back down again. And that uh, you'll actually see cloud formations that are like little stripes in the sky. And what those clouds are is the top of a gravity wave. As the as the moisture travels up, it, it nucleates into cloud, and then as it goes down, it evaporates, and then as it comes back up, uh, moisture condenses, and then so forth. Um, and the balloon, and that that is, in fact, uh, the whole entire com column of the atmosphere, sort of bouncing and rising in pressure, um, and not even at, beyond the stratosphere. That that actually will go all the way up to the the top of the atmosphere. very few direct wind or weather measurements in the stratosphere compared to lower altitudes. And that's true. Weather balloons, uh, they usually stop around 60,000 feet uh, in their measurements. And the loon balloons needed to go up to 70,000 sometimes. Um, mm -mm -mm. System engineering, key challenges. Near vacuum, yep, 1 20th as much air at sea level. Uh, sea level air is at 100 uh, thousand pascals and up there we were operating at 5,000 ambient pascals absolute thermal was a tricky bit explain more about that later uh -huh, blah, blah, overview this is pretty much publicly known ADSB. ADSB is great. Uh, that allows aircraft to see where we are without having to have air traffic control towers tell them. Uh, we appear right on their little map of other airplanes and map stuff. Uh, yeah, auto launch, blah, blah, blah. Assembly and launch. Altitude control. Connect to the internet. Again, we're just skimming through all this here. Most of this stuff is fairly well known. Let's get to the interesting bits. Brady pictures. What's a ballast? How does it work? Uh, I mean, that's you can get that in NASA. Uh, NASA PowerPoints. Key level metrics. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. This is accounting. Wind cones, what's a wind cone? Simulation of overprovisioned fleet serving Kenya. On the left, the different wind directions found to, across the balloon's altitude range showing that vehicles will consistently be blown westward. Ah, yes, so each of these points is uh, a measure by color of a different altitude at that location. And the arrows show what direction the wind is going in. So uh, I don't know their color code but like red might be the lowest and, and blue might be the highest altitude and if this was a steerable day you would see something like this where you have arrows going in more than one general direction where you can that you can go up or down to take advantage of this arrow or that arrow etc yeah those days happen your balloon fleet blows away sometimes uh, with these drifting drifting balloons Yeah. Two ACS units were used to improve this, which allowed faster ascent and descent. Blah, blah, blah. This is just, uh, yeah, yeah. 
helium and powder ballast fill Monte Carlo analysis tool. Um, this is basically like how much helium do, do you put in the balloon and how much um, extra weight do you load on board to give you the longest life um, and a good altitude range where you don't go too high and burst or you don't start too low and not be able to get uh, as high as you could to reach more winds in a nutshell there. Um, fill calculator tool. Did they actually give you the tool? I'm not sure. Power. Oh, uh, this is great. Uh, this is very important to be able to plan how much solar power you're going to get while you're actually using power. Yeah, okay. Vehicle optimizer tools, pretty pictures, uh, LTE stuff, mm -hmm. uh, LTE stuff, flight vehicle. A lot of introductory lightweight stuff. Well, that's pretty. Fleet during service. Let me know if I'm scrolling so fast that the, the screen is not keeping up, please. And feel free to ask questions or suggest I jump around to other sections. Mm -hmm. The bus. <laughs> I don't recall us ever calling it that but it does make sense in the general spacecraft terminology. Major configuration evolution. Lark, Merlin, Ibis, Nighthawk, Osprey. I forgot about Nighthawk. Osprey, Osprey Large, uh, less creative. Plover and Quail. I started when we were working on Merlin, and uh, that was a sausage-shaped mylar balloon that was 160 feet long, I think. Uh, it was just a little big, but it was only, I think, 30 or 40 feet in diameter, maybe 20 feet in diameter. It was not very successful, but it did produce uh, at least one UFO report, uh, so there's a win there for that. Well, I should do a special sometime on, uh, or a broadcast stream on uh, all of the UFO reports. Now that Loon has released all of the GPS uh, tracking points. Uh, we could actually uh, go back and see what balloons were seen by what uh, YouTube UFO reports. Pretty. Oh, there's the propeller experiment, which would uh, theoretically increase your steerability. Balloon. Okay, just generally describing a super pressure balloon. Again, just introductory info, pretty pictures. Uh huh. Is there anything juicy in here? Gobble flex, pretty much standard stuff. Billy Jean, that was pretty. Big uh, polarized table. Sign evolution. Gore design. That's gore design is a big part, a uh, big headache in balloon uh, design because that uh, changes a lot of the tension on the actual plastic, and you want the performance out of these balloons. Uh, you basically end up running them very close to the load limit of the plastic's tensile strength. So you need you need that the shape of that to be very well um, able to spread the tension uniformly. So there's not one little spot in the, in the gore that's really high tension because if that one spot reaches the tensile strength limit of the plastic, it will tear open and the whole balloon will burst. And that means that if you, if you have little concentrated areas that you know you might have, you have to lower all of the pressure that you uh, that you operate at, so you don't get close to little areas reaching the tensile strength, while the whole gore is way below its maximum strength. So you're really you're wasting. You you can't get as high pressure because you're babying it for little weak points that are uh, or shapes that are bad at different parts of the gore. 
scores, shortening, yeah, all this stuff is in NASA reports. Although the, the numbers are probably better than the NASA super pressure balloon because uh, the NASA balloons never work. Wrinkles. Ah, yes, those are going to be stress concentrations, um, like we were talking about. This is with the selfie stick that everyone hated trying to launch. Sam, were you there for a selfie stick launch? You can see a big, long carbon fiber pole coming from the base plate of the balloon in flight. Um, and this carbon fiber pole was like 40 I feet long. I love them. 20 feet. Oh, did you? <laughs> Tell me about him. I just heard complaints. Will to recover the bunch. Really? That's awesome. How long were they? Do you remember? I mean, I, I, I love the view that we could get from those things. It just seemed like they were a headache to launch, or was that just uh, a few people complaining uh, unreasonably? They were 20 foot long or so. Okay, so not, not ridiculous. They, they, they would have fit inside the crane, maybe not comfortably, but probably not banging the the corners too close. Diameter, yes, that's what diameter means. Uh, that's in Moffat as well. Do, 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 do. Tendon cage, oh, I've never heard that term. That sounds kind of, uh, anyway. Gores, top view, gore bulges. I love this acronym, UHMWPE, Dyneema. <laughs> that's ultra high weight, uh, sorry, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene uh, da, da, da. Ooh, nice shot of the tendons anchored on the load ring load ring I think that was called the load ring right and a pin here uh, which was used for uh, a little a little clamp a little grabber came down and held that pin uh, so it could all lift up high in the crane for inflation and and release Here's the UHMWPE braided tendons, and oh, that's, you see the apex seal. It's a big round seal there that seals all of the different gores, which you can see here are just little narrow strips at the end of those big, long, wide panels. Braided tendons changed length significantly due to tensile loading as the super pressure changed. Huh. Interesting. Temperature swings also changed the length relative to the gores. Uh, due to CTE, course changed less. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I remember before shortening, but I didn't remember the details. Yeah, oh, that was tricky figuring that out. Yeah, I remember a lot of work on that, a lot of variation. For shortening value of 3% was not adequate, uh, and 7% was too much. A pinch formation is, is what I was saying, the little uh, stress concentrations. A pinch will absolutely do that. Calculated based on tendon length and core center line. Do they give us the numbers? Yeah, yeah, optimal. Core pattern, different stresses. Pictures. Gore, did they give us the, did they give us, no. Nice. Oh, tease. So this is a basically a, hey, this is a problem, and these wildly large values are not optimal. So pick a number somewhere between those. Well, not exactly helpful. That sounds like probably a person who got the patents uh, asked that not to be included, knowing them. Um, let's see. Core center line, optimized stress profile ceiling. Yeah, yeah, diamond tables. Yeah, Billy Jean was Billy Jean. The 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 polarized light system here, um, which is not uh, anyway. This is polarized 
plates of glass that are backlit and you can use a sheet of polarized plastic. You can lay it on top of this and it will show little rainbows where there's been stretches uh, or thinning. Um, and they ran a bunch of digital cameras on a, on a track down above this to scan the entire core at a time. Huge, huge long thing. Ah, here's a great example of the polarized light. Um, this has been computer enhanced, but uh, sure. <laughs> Usually the edges are not that clear. But you can see bits of... Oh, I see. okay, so yeah. Pinches, this is where, uh, you know, you see it in a little region there, a bunch of them, and cold fractures, interesting feathers, as they go outward, I guess. We should have Pam on here sometime. Envelope film, film stress strain. All right, so yeah, that's the, uh, yeah, good stuff. General properties, apex and bottom assemblies, lightning cage, lightning cage, the FTS satellite comm system, ACS reverse ballonet. Ah, oh, that's a pretty picture. Yeah, so most of the stuff that I worked on was balloon in a balloon, ballonet. Ballonet in French means little balloon. Pancake, oh, ibis. Oh, that was weird. Yeah, it basically, it literally had a big flat sheet in there that would just l l be pushed up or pushed down. Um, what's interesting in these diagrams is it is not representative of real in-flight melanin shape, which I'm a little disappointed in um, because helium is lighter than air. It actually makes the balanet have a completely flat interface between the air below and the helium above, um, yin yang accepting. Um, there were a few times in Moffat where we were able to demonstrate this by putting diluted helium in the top of, uh, it's probably an ibis ballonet, I think, um, and then just straight air in the bottom. And there was a beautiful flat, looked like a deck of that polyethylene ballast uh, ballonet. Um, as the air filled, that deck just raised or lowered as you lowered air as you let air out of it so in reality these uh, these diagrams the pink and blue dividing lines should be straight across here straight across on the spherical straight across on the reverse and i don't know for yin yang yeah yeah oh how we leak how we don't leak statistical designs uh, pretty pick of the crane. Sam and I spent some time around that crane. This is the Winnemucca one. Yep. Good old dusty Winnemucca. Yep. Altitude control. Yeah, yeah. This is... Oh, nice cutaways. That could be helpful for people. Like, the goal is for this information... Well, the... The world wants the goal for, of this documentation to be so that other balloon projects can advance instead of having to re reinvent all the wheels that Loon had to reinvent <laughs> or invent. Unfortunately, we're seeing some areas that um, it took a lot of work that have been omitted from this particular document. Um, but again, some of the intellectual property was no longer Loon's to... Uh, to regulate at the end of the project. And I'm sure there was lawyers involved. Various ACSs, the early prototype. Oh, I remember that. That was the, the genie in a bottle um, design. I think it was nicknamed Croce for Jim Croce's time in a bottle song, maybe. Oh, this looks weird. <laughs> Dual Thor. Uh, I uh, I made oh look at that one of my parts made it in here. That little bridge is my helium leak detector for the ballonet. And uh, what is this? Moving preload system. Oh, wait what? What is that? 
passive thermally compensated bearing preload systems okay that is useful that well i mean i'm assuming by the title it's useful but basically one of the hardest things for uh, ballooning surprisingly is moving parts up there in the stratosphere the thermal the thermal behavior is really weird uh air doesn't cool things very well sun heats things a lot um but you will get very cold um and that's due to radiation into space of your heat and somewhat exposure to air um but these these turbines you know you spin at 60,000 rpms you need a bearing that can start as it says here start from 100 degrees c below zero which is uh, what's 100 degrees c below zero in fahrenheit probably 212 degrees no what is negative 100 degrees c in fahrenheit the answer is minus 73.3 degrees celsius all right siri is just not playing ball we'll do uh, the computer negative 100 c is negative 148 degrees Fahrenheit. Serious. Um, so bearings, you know, the expansion and contraction of materials, um, rubbers, just, it's really complicated to ma manage. And that was a huge learning curve, a lot of really valuable information. So this, we'll take a look sometime. Looks like it's gonna be really helpful. Ooh, pretty airflow. Da, da, da. Oh yeah, control algorithm, algorithm, reliability and redundancy. Yeah, the single ACS it was a little, little tricky for redundancy since there wasn't any. I, I guess that's why Thor went to a dual compressor. Yeah, intermediate step. Yeah. Yeah, yep, this is good info. Avionics. Sport an increasingly large payload with aggressive power, pointing, and stability. Reliable sensor data. Safety. Yeah. Okay, so we get the the whole system ACS, D spin. D spins moving parts were uh, a problem were were a problem continuously. Um that they involved a slip ring where metal contacts uh, touched a bunch of tracks. Like there were different signals and power uh, that went up through to the balloon from the payload. And the payload had to had to rotate um, to compensate for the the balloon moving. The payload had to stay pointed at the sun while the balloon moved. So that meant these these wipers were going to have to go all the way around these cylindrical tracks and. Uh, they ended up getting um, sparks and, and tiny little arcs that would uh, blow little pits and craters in those and eventually uh, increase the resistance and make poor signal and uh, poor power uh, transmission. So still sort of an unsolved thing in ballooning is uh, a D-spin that's reliable and not ridiculously expensive. Uh, separation joint, um, just in case everything goes to hell. Uh, and the balloon bursts that can rip off from the payload there. Envelope flight controller. Oh, that's uh, something new. Probably having to do with the separation. I was never familiar with that. Solar panels, avionics, LTE, pretty dishes for LTE. The bus. So yeah, we had uh, carbon fiber, right? Aluminum, yeah. Temperature swings, yeah. They had to be aluminum covered carbon fiber so that you didn't get super hot in the sun since the air, like I was saying, does not like provide passive cooling very well. Power system. Let's see if this is actually useful for people. Um, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, capacity range, cold, solar. Okay, that's not helpful. Yeah, 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 yeah. what you need to worry about, batteries, lithium ion. Come on, this is boring, boring, boring. If you, that's pretty nice. Uh, as you see here, keep your batteries in a styrofoam box. 
pretty reliable information for balloons. Um, yep, yeah, uh huh. Pretty basic stuff. Pretty panels. Those were custom engineered by SunPower in France uh, to be lighter than one kilogram and produce 165 watts of output. Very fancy, very lightweight. Um, under 50 volts. Uh, yeah. Yep. Mm hmm. And no, they didn't provide any useful information for power. Cool. Uh, let's see. Solar panel. Pointing them, these spin, unwind, brushless motor, as I was talking about. Uh, look at that, long-term operation of the slip rings. I, uh, I jumped the gun there on explaining that. Never fully resolved. I was right. Never fully resolved. There's a frontier in ballooning. Can signals prove to be more sensitive to early failure than the power? as failure first showed up as a significant AC impedance change over the mechanism. Through experimentation, we found gold on gold, brushes and rings were the most reliable. Come on. Come on, engineers. That's like tried and true known stuff. Uh, increasing the diameter of the rings improved results. That's also mechanically a no-brainer, but, you know, we have to iterate. You know, you don't know how big, and you can probably optimize initially to have something cheaper than gold. Early degradations were detectable as errors on the digital CAN bus and were not immediately catastrophic. Yeah, that would be like you'd have to have your inquiry repeated. You know, if the payload was asking the the Apex board, hey, what's your temperature? Uh, the Apex board might not hear it the first time. You have to repeat um, time to failure prevent mechanism from if we're able to prevent the mechanism from spinning well that certainly will stop the errors um, because the errors are from jumping over little craters in the in the surface of the metal before comp oh I see so before everything f before the connection the data connection completely failed they were able to stop turning which meant your solar panels would no longer be facing the Sun all day long uh, and that means they would turn around backwards and lose power generation. But you can conserve power, and the panels will come back around eventually. Uh, so you get partial power during the day, statistically probably one fourth the power, as you, if you assume it's rotating continuously. And uh, you know, just stop broadcasting your cell phone. Don't use so much climbing and descending power. Um, but yeah. So they could safely steer to land, basically limp to land to land. That's good. Good, good plan. Oh, yeah, there's the brushes I was talking about. Yep, they look quite worn out and black. The black would be from sparks and arcs vaporizing the metal and landing as carbon soot again optical or RF, but likely would have stuck with the slip ring for power. Yeah, it's it's not possible to realistically transfer power without the slip ring, although yeah, indu induction connection would have been possible for the power, but probably would have been prohibitive for uh, mass because uh, you'd have to convert it to AC to cross the induction coils. Powder ballast. Yeah, we'll come back to that. That's good pretty simple variable drop size that that was nice to have um, you just control how much you dropped of the weight lateral propulsion yeah, yeah details okay we'll come back to this stuff in another thing oh nice and we'll come back to some of this in another stream again feel free to ask comments or or whatever in the chats Yeah, yeah, propeller blades, pretty. Yeah, in the stratosphere, your propellers have to be big and deep curved for the super, super thin air. Pointing axis and cable helix. Holy crap, this was a system that I had thought about 
doing <laughs> on future balloon projects. Holy crap. Cable Helix, which allowed for winding and unwinding of the standard cabling and enabled 400 degrees of rotation for a power and Ethernet cable to the system, would unwind periodically, perhaps a handful of times a day in normal operation, but still be able to point in the needed direction. That's great. That's great. Okay, that's that's good. The shield is needed. It's critical to use foil. Cool. We'll come back to that another time. Oh, yeah, just like a clock spring in your car. Yep. Very nice. That, that's really, really good data. Because that's a, a problem, obviously, that was very resistant to solution uh, as it was, you know, continued to be a problem for Loon to the end. Mm -hmm. What was that? Propeller brake. Oh, we'll skip that for now. Flight tests of the propellers. Blah, blah, blah. I'll come back to that later. Satellite comms. Viridium SBD in Marsat. Yeah. Uh-huh. Good stuff in Marsat. Yep. Very well-known stuff. Flight termination. This is probably another interesting bit. Reliable. Mm-hmm. Dual cutters. Single vertical plunger cutters. What was that? Super soft terminate for contingency landings with a very low landing speed. What was that? I, I don't know that one. Wait, are we just talking the small window? Or is this an extra... Wait, was this where we uh, cut the the the, dig, uh, the DP sensor tube? Vertical plunger cutter. Hmm. I don't see it on these diagrams either. Oh, there we go. Cigar oh, that's definitely cutter. new. Cigar cutter. Oh. <laughs> uh, was that the thing that was um, high energy, so to speak? Or did that just push a slowly push a thing through the window? Hmm. Looks like it shoved something down through one of the existing cutter windows. No, that was different. I don't see it here. Okay. Okay. We'll come back to that another time. New bus separation descent system. Yeah, parachute deployment was always a little less reliable. Was this... Um, what? Oh. Oh, so it deployed a drogue and the parachute was in a, a chute bag on the end of the drogue. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, parachute design and attachment and mechanisms were really frustrating for the life of the project, it looks like. It sounds like this one might have been better, though. Mm -hmm. Individual parachutes for both the bus and the balloon. Yeah, that's what I was afraid might have to happen eventually, was just stop trying to take the payload down on the balloon is because of parachute tangling issues. Oh, right, yeah. Without the balloon connected, your payload's going to drag a little less. Oh, nice. Yeah, we'll have to come back to this in detail. Balloon with... Yep, yep, yep. Oh, nice. Oh, I re really like that. That finally. Wait until you're close to the ground to deploy the darn parachute. That's, I mean, yeah, it's a good idea. Nominal descent. It's pretty, more pretty. A lot of stuff on the, uh, the separate. Oh, that's great shot. Look at that. That's great. 
<laughs> the solar panels are feeling the pressure, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Look at those little carbon fiber rods bending. And they've relaxed now that the chute is doing the work and the balloon is far above. Descent scenarios and triggering. Cool stuff. Yeah, we'll look at that later. Nice algorithm. Good to see what the decisions were on when to do this stuff. Pressure triggers, that's really good. GPS sometimes doesn't always work for various reasons. A lot of detail in that system. That's cool. It's, it, it's, it's a hard decision to make. Um, it's a hard decision to make on how to do your parachute because if you well for many reasons like originally loon didn't want to separate the payload from the balloon um so that you didn't have to go find two separate things and you didn't have to build like a tracker for the balloon itself uh, in addition to the payload having its own tracker um, but you know you eventually have to learn what compromise is important in that equation landing zone prediction accuracy and that's it's tough in balloons based on uh, yeah vehicle dynamics and wind speed accuracy. Yep. Descend more quickly. Yeah. Reduces time for errors. The yep. This is good stuff. That's great. Uh, where was that? 77, 47. Don't know what state that's in. It's Shirley Mountains. Huh. Um, okay special test showing a fully vented balloon and vertical flight train above the bus at upper altitudes. Yep. Momentary increase in balloon terminal velocity relative to the bus. Yeah, that's uh, that's where things start getting not optimal for things. <laughs> Next, the balloon has a little, little hat. That's cute. Drag disc to keep the apex uh, up above the rest of the system. So it looks like that was a pain in the butt to rig up there. Do you remember, Sam? Yes. <laughs> Big pain. <laughs> Wind data resulting irreducible trajectory error due to wind model error. Yeah, um, I don't know if they cover it, but uh, my solution, my suggestion was always uh, drop a drop sonde before you descend, which will basically be a weather balloon transmitter on a parachute, and you will get a, a, a completely accurate reading of the wind column. No forecast or model required. I don't think they ever wanted to do that though. Mm -hmm. FTS squib triggering logic. Trigger triggering logic is fun. I got to tell you like flight termination and that there's a lot of discussion that goes into that um, particularly in the automated decision making process when it loses command from the ground or when a sensor starts lying to the logic like it has to take all of that into account hey uh, flow chart geofencing commands uh, satellite command outage pressure arming control squib control power loss while armed yep squib fire geofencing actually there was a little bit of uh uh, th the question is, do you have like, anyway, there's a lot of places in the world and reasons why you might want to immediately terminate or you want, might want to not immediately terminate, um, depending on what's below you and where you're heading. What did Loon choose? Any of the active predefined map of keep out zones? Okay, yep, so apparently Loon's logic was to just terminate if it was outside of uh, 
particular zones. The French uh, used to do a different process, which was uh, when commands would be connection would be lost uh, from the ground, it would just never cut down. <laughs> they figured a uh, slow descent in two months would be better than dropping it on someone's well on population. Good stuff. We'll come back to this some other time. Surviving a burst love. And, oh, that was always fun. Yeah. Hey, the fuse connection. That's handy. The mechanical fuse to be torn off. Camp stool, knuckle, mechanical fuse. Good stuff. Hundreds of G's. John Cromie's thing. Yeah. High speed cameras at 300 G of the fuse. Yeah, it broke right where it was supposed to there. As the camp stool gets sloshed sideways at very high speeds. Bearings. Yeah, this is important stuff. Did they give us the goods? Low viscosity, several different solutions. Dry lubrication with graphite impregnated polymers or tungsten disulfide. Oh, we're getting chemical names. Medium PFPE based creases, which is basically Teflon, were very successful. Oh, they used the actual model number. They gave us the model number. Thank you, Loon. Lubrication for bearings, as, as I was saying, is a big, it's a big problem, you know, a big puzzle for projects that you spend a lot of money on failing at. Mm -hmm. High RPN, M's the turbo machine. Specialty ester-based greases, where they do not give us the name of the grease. Okay. Thermal. Yeah, yeah, sensing. Uh, yeah, I, I take great. I, I, I differ. Um, <laughs> yeah, reasonably accurate. Yeah, I, I take issue with their decisions for making the temperature sensor. It could have been done a lot easier with not much more effort, but uh, it was chosen not to. RTDs over thermistors, yes, no-brainer, photon harvesting, yeah, Chad's baby, heating and preheating, yeah, moving parts should be preheated, Moon's electrical system, use mostly industrial-related components rather than mil-spec, then heat the boards, yep, no-brainer. Storm-induced electrical activity, this was interesting stuff, yep, when you fly over lightning, even if you don't get hit by it, you get zapped. Stormtrooper, peak current detector. Oh, look at that, a little RF loop to detect uh, ambient electrical field changes. Corona discharge current, that would be just a little sharp wire to see if you had super high voltages, um, basically a super high voltage gradient across the top bottom of balloon more effective than expected in detecting storms. Reasonable high frequencies of streamers, which max out the sensing circuitry. Detection mechanism for nearby weather. Yeah, I mean, it really made sense uh, to do that. It was kind of weird not to do that much earlier. Uh huh. Moisture detector. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Tall clouds. Oh, I worked on the cloud shorts. Uh -huh. Yeah, I actually, I actually had that IC and the moisture detector on my board that I never flew. Field detector. This is great for the lightning stuff. Um, it's handy. Scorching of the cables to the apex. Uh, I believe they just shielded the cable. We'll come back to this another time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the classic bad day in a super pressure balloon. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. Nice. <laughs> also cool. That's quite severe. Yeah, it needs shielding. Okay. Um, we did a lot of zapping. I didn't know this. This is great.
We'll come back to all this another time. Good, good stuff on how to prevent the damage. Yeah, how to deal with can bus warnings, reliability. Yeah, th there are external documents to this one that uh, that we'll look through in another stream, another day. Uh, reliability. This is kind of a dry subject. Sh should be covered. We should take a look at it some other time. Yes. Make sure you test everything before you fly. Basically. Comms. Yeah. Original tests in New Zealand Wi-Fi, but uh, the conclusion was it sucked. Oh yeah. There's the pretty balloon or um, the Brazil school test. And that was using one of the little Wi-Fi. Um, we actually just had rocket uh, Wi-Fi endpoints in these. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Access backhaul core. Mm -hmm. Kind of boring for me as a balloon guy. Oh, here we go. Uh, is this interesting? Sorry if I'm if I'm if I'm skimming too fast for the graphics. Um, yes, yeah, so this is a, a nice little overall diagram here. Satellite, the flight computer, solar bat transponder, um, and the LTE stuff, and the gimbals on the corners for backhaul. Comms node, access network, LTE. Cell phone nerds will love this. Our LTE subsystems coverage. Oh, coverage simulator over the SF Bay area. Yeah, that's uh, that's a bit wide for. Um, that would mean if it, if you have a LTE cell that big, you you could not do that in the Bay. There's too many phones within this red footprint, and that's why Loon. Uh, had to do it in low population density. Uh huh. Uh, they might have proceed. Yeah, it, you have to add more cells to be able to handle more people. So they're adding four of them here. This is a two. There you go. There's two twos. Uh, or no, that's probably dual. Yeah, it's probably transmit and receive. Yep, yep. RF. RF is black magic, by the way. My hat's off to the RF engineers. What was that? Airstream? No, oh, network management. A lot of LTE stuff in here. Very, um, hopefully, useful to somebody. Signals. More signals. More signals. Boy, the, uh, the LTE team had to do a lot of work for this report. <laughs> I, uh, I'm kind of jealous how much of their details made it in here and how very little of the balloon's details made it in here. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> there are like up to 100 pages of LTE stuff here. Calm stuff. <laughs> My goodness. Is the rest of this doc LTE? Ah, no, it is not. Okay, so this is fun. Uh, before we proceed, we're about halfway through. I'll try to get to the bottom of it. Uh, and wrap this up in an hour here but uh, it is time for intermission and bathroom breaks uh, although i know you all probably have the luxury of watching on the toilet i do not have the luxury of broadcasting on the toilet um, so let me just put up a little uh, banner here that says oh, we'll be back maybe play some of that loud music uh, Pleasant music. <laughs> Maybe we uh, 
We're on page 234. Maybe we'll just put up a picture of the, the pretty balloon while I'm gone. And put up a little banner. It says, I'm going to pee. Oh, there you go. I'll see you all in about five minutes.
<laughs> see if I can fix this music so it will play play nice, so to speak. So I like having it on while I'm reading. <clears throat> I think I think the trade is the trade. I'm distracted. The trade is it will pop between tracks, but it could be worse. volume on that. Are we getting that? Are we getting that? I don't think we are. go and let's get back to our project loon loon library technical documentation this is the main PDF uh, there are a bunch of other ancillary documents and data sets that we'll go through another time and we will be uh, just skimming this doc as a reminder uh, and we'll be going into more detail in future streams um, and feel free to request particular information to go back to another time. We were on page 237, if I recall correctly. Loon software. Probably skim through this pretty quick. It's it is fairly dry. Important stuff. We'll go into it in more detail later. Uh, fleet management, weather data, fairly expectable. Um, partial fleet management block diagram. Mm, no surprises there. Good to know what you actually have to do for managing the health notifications, power consumption, power management. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> interesting, but uh, it's kind of a no-brainer that you need to do this stuff uh, if you're building a flight vehicle. Yeah, pretty non-impressive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty wind directions, as we talked about earlier. This wind cones are very helpful in understanding how, uh, where you can go from where you are. Uh, the, the possibilities uh, are as you move along one actual arrow to like the next point in the sky. Uh, you now have a choice of any of those arrows and you can choose a different direction to another point and you have the choice of those arrows for where to go from that point. 
of course the the servers have to do that all internally um, and in a chain basically in reverse to be able to figure out how to get you here when you're here so you have to kind of work backwards to see what the path might be through all the different wind directions <clears throat> this is this is a good summary here of the uh, weather models available um, yeah so this is showing loons observations from the vehicle were the most accurate to 100 meters uh, wind speed however the loon vehicles weren't often ahead of where they needed data but I don't actually fully understand how all this was implemented from the balloons um, data collection, so that will be interesting to dive into another time. F wind data fused, so weather agency plus loons data gives you a negotiated, you know, agreement output. Mm -hmm. Improving long-term forecasts, weather hazards. Ah, still susceptible to turbulence and electrical activity. Tall clouds can cool the lift gas. Incorporated two nowcast data streams generated by NCAR, the CDO and the CTH. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. It's good for people to know that they need to pay attention to these. Those are public, public data sets you can get in real time. <coughs> Yeah, PR level information. Mer very PR level information. Local planners. Balloons cannot teleport. <laughs> that is true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this talks about the tree search uh, that I, I talked about just a minute ago, which shows uh, what routes are possible to get there. Mm, we'll go into this later. This is actually very interesting and helpful, um, but move along this time. Ooh, math. Hopefully that will be helpful for the software future planners. Mm-hmm. Sleepwalk. Mm -hmm. Do -do -do. Lots of navigation info. That's kind of cool. Oh yeah, so this is all part of that nav. Like anything in here is probably going to be able to navigate to here. Six hours. Anything out here in twelve hours and so forth. <coughs> Ooh, no fly zones. Huh. Deep red, no fly zones. So yeah, um, noticed <laughs> all of Asia and Europe, Cuba, various places that didn't want us. Mm -hmm. Very detailed. The forecasting is actually going to be very helpful for other balloon projects. At this skimming level, I'm not sure if they include enough detail to really be useful, but it's a good primer at least on what what you need to do and in, in the output, what the output needs to look like of your your data processing. You need this level of information, and you need these pretty pictures, obviously. Yeah, we saw that. Interesting. We'll look at that another time. Storm avoidance. There's the convective diagnostic oceanic storm activity. Basically a storm forecast. Cloud tops. This is one of the layers you can usually bring up on like satellite weather overlays, um, the cloud top height. <clears throat> or at least for aviation, uh, <laughs> aviation satellite weather web pages. Mm -hmm. Embedded software, Major Tom, named 
as you can imagine, because ground control was on the ground and Major Tom was up in the air. Lunix. Oh, that was within the communication system. So that was probably just for LTE. Major Tom. Major Tom. That's kind of surprising that Major Tom survived to the end. Um, Major Tom was around when I joined in 2012, which means it was probably a little long in the tooth there. Used Cortex M4. This is cool stuff. Processor crash scraping over SATCOM. Interesting. We'll dig into this another time. <clears throat> I love the. Well, that was rather brief for firmware. <laughs> I actually like this kind of stuff, but. Oh well. Maybe they'll go into it more in other places. Production software integrated systems. Site reliability engineer. This is. I don't know what this is. Degrade gracefully sounds good. Oh, I see. Um, balloon vehicle automation. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, to be able for the servers to tell the balloons what to do to do all their navigation and what would happen when they weren't. Is that loud? That is loud. LTE cell phone connection related things, network robustness, oh, internal like software engineering stuff that's, yeah, very classical software engineering. A aerospace safety, yep, automated testings, novel challenges. Yeah, that's a problem in ballooning. Rockets are actually far easier because of this problem where you can't repeat the darn sequence of events because the balloons are highly weather interactive. Rockets actually don't interact much with the weather at all. Essentially the atmosphere is a static thing that the rocket passes through essentially instantaneously. <clears throat> session. I think that had to be do, done during uh, LE connections or backhaul connections. High latency, low data rate. This is a problem for all balloons. Yep. Yeah, I set data pro. I, I Yeah, I've looked at that for other balloon projects. Median round trip of one to three minutes. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, intermittent. Time travel. I had no idea Loon had accomplished time travel. I can't believe Google canceled it. Maybe the flux capacitor was too expensive. Oh, small world's charts. Um, I have to say my opinion of their decisions for displaying um, telemetry data uh, is very low. This is inappropriate level of significant digit for displaying to humans, just flat out inappropriate. We won't get into my gripes <laughs> tonight much. End of service integration, link availability. 
ability. This is kind of boring for me as a balloonist. Start simple, iterate quickly. Uh -huh, this is more LTE stuff. LTE. Mm. Oh, how to do software development or LTE? Yeah, availability metrics. Blameless postmortems. Oh, I see. Okay. That's cool. Postmortems were common. I mean, they were common in all parts of the project. Um, we'll keep going here. Deployment challenges. Unprecedented. Transition from R&D to product res readiness. <clears throat> oh, this should be good. <laughs> you think? Number of buckets. Technical read readiness. Yeah, moving parts were particularly challenging in, I guess, advanced wireless radios. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they really kind of glossed over um, the fact that Loon spent like eight years longer than they thought they would on R&D. Well... Well, thinking they were out of R&D most of that time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Telecom aviation is a little more relative, relevant. No existing. Uh, no, that's not correct. Now it may not be globally harmonized, but the ICAO does exist in most countries many countries have modeled their national laws on balloons after the ICAO but yeah there's not a harmonized set of regulations and control interfaces mm -hmm. country by cover, country approvals this is good we'll go back into this another time um, boy, that was also very brief aviation regulatory learnings there's a lot of stuff that uh, would have been nice to have in that section launch site location matters oh no kidding <laughs> yeah automation yeah there's a crane Puerto Rico crane. Hmm, interesting. interesting. Okay, this this is what I to see details on here. How did Loon communicate with air traffic trolls around the world? Uh -huh. Is there enough interesting stuff here to actually do a video? Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, there was not. <laughs> well, oh well. Landing zones. Oh, pretty. Very pretty. Learn from your misses. Build your recovery network. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Recovery vendors all over the place. Although, that meant our crews didn't get to fly all over the world. But they did a few times. 
Sam, did you ever get to? Peru. That's pretty. Aviation safety. Eight months in Peru. Hot dog, that's great. Was it fun? Very fun and amazing and educational. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, this is uh, this is interesting information. Uh, this, this information is it's really interesting because it's built on data, and it's very easy to well, it's very hard to actually nail down. You know, there's a lot of guesses on top of guesses to try and figure out um, you know how much availability, how, how statistically often are the winds going to be. <clears throat> able to let you go back to a particular spot if you have certain amount of speed you know uh, locomotion in the airship areas mm -hmm. hammerhead was this alex's or kevin's no this wasn't kevin's Kevin's was Raptor, I think. Well, good to know for guesses the number of watts, speed, props, etc. Um, mm hmm. Film versus fabric. That's good. Oh, yeah. That was pretty. That was the fabric one there in uh, Yellowknife. That was cool. Really glad people got to do that. Yeah, we'll come back to this uh, film background. PE01. Oh yeah, it got the... Uh... Okay, we're looking at the Raptor. Meatloaf. <laughs> the Japanese actually figured this out and called it a Tawara balloon back in the 90s. Split, flopped, and stretched. Diced, sliced, and julienned. Looks like a little caterpillar under here. Bumpy footballs. Showed a clear but insufficient decrease in drag. Insufficient, huh. Asymmetrical bumpy teardrop. Finally, non-tendent PE-01 error shell to cover the cross-tendent envelope. Oh. Mamba. Reasonable drag. Oh, interesting. Much less expensive for the film, of course. Better mass efficiency. Yeah, we'll come back to this in detail. Oh, wow. That looks like a lot of stuff to launch. Very pretty. Ooh, weird balanets in there. Did you ever, um, they never actually released one, did they, Sam? Yeah, uh, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> uh, airship launch. Oh, yeah, we'll come, we'll come back to this another time in detail. Very pretty. Yeah, the V-Launch. Okay, yeah, that's what I, I'd heard about, which looks uh, fraught with risk for damaging the envelope, but interesting. Oh, yeah, we'll have to come cover this. This is uh, a lot of good learnings, or at least on the surface, not so publicly known lessons. Whoop! ACS compression down to the ground. That's one thing that we uh, looked at with IBIS. We uh, 
looked at doing IBIS all the way down to the ground for uh, failure analysis to bring it within reach without crashing it to the ground on a parachute. Uh, back to LTE. We're nearing the end. 90% there. Preparing for hydrogen. Okay, this is a little more about the hydrogen. Oh, this is when we, we originally saw this. Launch zones, hydrogen detonations, vehicle equipment, descent and abatement, cutting patterns. Oh yeah, the big slicing things. We'll come back to that. Descent, abatement, termination, I think are pretty interesting stuff. Dynamic spectrum. Oh, this is more radio. They really hop around here to subject matter all over the document. <clears throat> oh, interesting. Collaborative traffic management. This is more, again, on the air traffic control side. This is useful stuff. We'll come back to this again, too. Yeah, mm hmm It's getting a little nerdy into the airspace control, which is good. Uh-huh. Yeah. Actually kind of generic, not loon-specific. Yeah, kind of generic. Okay, so they're now talking about new sort of standards being made for air traffic management. And that's it. Any appendices? Muffet. <laughs> oh, all kinds of good acronyms. PE01, yep. Quail. Rails. <laughs> Raven. Rickenbacker. The Scudder. Super temperature, always a word I liked. Tendons. Welling long wave flux, that's the heat you get off the Earth that runs into you on its way out to space. Factor nav, pro quality IMU. Um, pro quality, that's kind of debatable. Um, well, maybe they had a better model than the Factor navs that we're familiar with. Yin yang, obsolete. Zero pressure noun and verb. Well, that's, that's a good distinction. They are two separate meanings. Accomplishments. Oh, yeah, yes, okay. I had always suspected the number of flights was definitely over a thousand, and that's great to see. It was 2,100, because we did a lot of flights. Total flight time, two million hours. 218 years of flight time. Hope we learned good lessons. More than, than is in this doc. Total flight distance. Longest flight aloft. 336 days. Average flight duration. Yeah. Well, kept going up. Kept going up. Doing specs. Oh, this is good. This is good information for, uh, what the heck was Hammerhead? I missed that. What was Hammerhead? Oh, I guess this class of balloon, maybe? Um, Plover, Quail, Raptor, Seahawk. Lateral power. I didn't know Quail had lateral power. Oh, that was, was that the, uh, oh, it was the propeller on the stem. Max ballast, 25 Ks, 
battery config per pack. Hydra, triple Hydra, total energy generation, storage, panel area, daily harvest at equator equinox, payloads, more LTE stuff. And is that the end? That is the end. Well, thanks for coming along with me in this uh, jaunt through Loon's just released public information. Uh, this is sort of the summary and the, the document that binds it all together. Uh, and there's a bunch of other data and more detailed uh, looks at some of these subjects um, that we'll dive into next time. We'll, we'll take a skim through those um, and take a look. I'm hoping to, uh, it'll probably take a month or two to get through all this stuff, maybe streaming once a week. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you all for joining me. Um, feel free to come on. I do streams uh, every now and then. Um, you can sign, you can subscribe on Twitch to get notified or YouTube. Um, yeah, so this has been fun. Uh, Y'all have a good night. Take care.